Hello, everybody. Welcome to Python for Everybody. We're doing some code walkthroughs. If you want to get the source code, you can take a look at the sample code and download it and, uh, and work through it. And so uh, what we're working on uh, now is uh, doing some uh, retrieval and visualization of email data. Um, it's kind of ironic. We are going to now look at the email data that we um, look at the email data that, that we started with. It's the same uh, Sakai developer list email data. And so um, there's this service called Gmain. And Gmain uh, archives uh, developer lists and various email lists. And I've made a copy of their data because all the students in my class hitting the same their server with their API would crush it. So in order to be a nice guy, I've put up a much more powerful server with just the data from, uh, from this one list. And it's about a gigabyte of data, so be real careful if you're paying for network. Um, <clears throat> so the basic process we're going to go through is we're going to have a spidering process that's a simple, restartable, focused on the network problems, uh, data, data pulling to pull content.sqlite, and there's going to be a database there. And then we're going to have a cleanup process. This database is going to get large, about a gigabyte. And then we're going to have a process that takes it kind of grinds through this data. It takes a while. And um, and so then it's going to read this mapping, and I'll show you that when it comes, because things like people's names have changed over all these years. And it does a cleanup and makes a really nice, highly relational uh, version of this data. And then we visualize from here. And so this, this could take you several days to finish this. This will take like a few minutes to run, and then this will just take seconds to run. And so this is a, a multi-step process where... Um, if you were doing something like running something for two days to produce a visualization and it blew up three quarters of the way through, it would do you no good. And so that's why we break this into uh, simple parts. But right now we're just going to focus on this part right here and, uh, and take a look at the mail bit. Um, and, uh, you know, the mail bit and retrieve the mail and then uh, we'll, we'll have another video to talk about the rest of this stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So here is gmain.py. That is the basic code. And it's hopefully this stuff is look, starting to look familiar. The thing that's weird here is we've got to do some date time parsing. And there is code that's out there, but you may have to install it. And I had to write my code in a way that uh, didn't assume that you could install the date time parser. And so it has it even if that's not there, it uses my own date time parser. And that's what this code is. Don't worry too much about that. Um, and of course we have to deal with the lack of certificates inside of Python and uh, and so we start things out and this is really a simple table we've got a messages table that's got a primary key uh, the email itself when it was sent what the subject and the headers and the body okay uh, and so what we're going to do is, because we have to pick up where we left off, we're going to uh, select the uh, largest uh, primary key from the messages table and retrieve that. And, uh, and then we're going to go to the one after that. Okay, um, And so we, we know what the ID is, and we're going to pick up where we left off. Um, and so we have a starting point. It starts either 0 or 1. And we're going to ask how many messages to retrieve. We've got some counters. And so we're going to say, OK, see if select ID for messages where ID equals whatever that starting is. It's the highest number we've seen so far. And if, we, uh, if we've got, if, we've, if row is not none, that means we've already retrieved this particular email message. Otherwise, we're going to keep on going and we're in good shape. And this is one that we want to retrieve. And we're subtracting that so we don't. And so this is the base URL. This is the um, this is the URL of our API, the one that I copied. My I have a nice copy of all this data <clears throat> on a server that's accessible worldwide and won't crash. And so the format of this is you can say I would like the email address for one from one to two or from one hundred. Oops. From you know. 102, 101, message 101 to 102, and we can just kind of walk through these things. So that's the message ID. And so if we're going to make the URL, 
Um, we're going to take the base URL, add the starting address, and then add plus one. So we got the slash at the end of the starting address. And so that's how we form those. Um, and we're going to retrieve that, and we're going to decode it. We've seen this in some other ones. We're going to check to see if we got legit data. If not, if we didn't, if I got a 404 not found or something else, we're going to quit. Uh, if someone hits Control C, which is our Control Z, we get the program interrupt and we'll stop. Um, if there's some other problem, right, we'll uh, we're going to you know complain and keep going. And if we have five failures in a row, we're going to quit. But it will just keep on going because these things do have glitchy bits here. And so at this point, if we've made it this far, we've, we've retrieved the URL and we've got the number of characters we've retrieved. And if we get bad data, if it doesn't start with from, because this is a mail message, right? And they all start with from space. If it's right, it starts with from space. Um, then what we're going to, we're going to tolerate up to five failures there for bad data, because it could be bad. And then we're going to find a blank line because that's the new line at the end of one line and then a blank line. And then we're going to take and break this into the headers, the mail headers, which is that mail headers is this stuff right here up to, but not including the blank line. And then the body is everything after that. Okay. And, um, and so we'll just have break that into pieces. Otherwise we'll complain and tolerate up to five characters. And then we're going to use a regular expression, kind of from the regular expressions chapter, to pull out an email address from the from colon line somewhere in these headers, from colon right there. It's going to go find a less than and then pull, oops, come on, pull this stuff out up to it. So you got the less than, you got the parentheses, you got one or more non blank characters followed by an ant side, followed by one or more non blank characters. And We'll get back a list of those. We should only get one. <laughs> if we find one, we're going to grab the email. We're going to uh, strip the lower case. And if we got some little nasty less than sign in there, we'll tolerate that as well. So this is kind of clean up. And you get used to this where you're like, oh, how come all those email addresses have this other stuff in them? Um, and then we also look for it if there are no less than signs. And we do this way. This is. And that's different. Some some mail messages have it this way, and others, again, you write this code after you watch it for a while. And you're like, oh, it's crapped out and giving me bad stuff. And I make them all lowercase so they match better and get rid of bad characters. Well, I'm, now I got an email address. Then what I do is I look for the date of this. So I got I'm going to graph these by date. So I look for this line and use a regular expression to pull that out, right? So it's, I'm looking for a date, followed by a blank, followed by any number of characters, followed by a comma. So I'm not interested in this Wednesday bit, so I'm skipping that bit right there and going and grabbing everything after that comma space. And so it's really here to the end of the line. So that's the new line. So that's it's going all the way. It's going to pull this bit right here. That's the text. And this is where we're going to like say, oh, that's kind of a funky looking date, and we want to standardize that date. So we're going to, um, uh, let's see, yeah, we're going to we're going to chop it off at the 26 character. Apparently, I don't know what the 26. Why do we care about the 26 character? But we chop that off at the 26 character, and then we're going to parse it, and that's going to give us back a nice clean date sent at date. Otherwise, we're going to complete. We're going to quit. And if we can't parse it, then we're going to tolerate five bad email addresses in a row. Um, then we're looking for the subject line using another regular expression. Mm -hmm. Subject line, regular expression. That's pretty easy. Up to, but not including, right? There's a blank there. It's the subject. And we pull that out. We get the subject. Now, at this point, we've parsed it and we got good stuff, so we reset the fail counter because I kept saying, if you fail five straight times, you quit. And we're going to print it out, and then we're just going to insert that stuff. We've got the, the, the ID of the message, which um, we've got, the email address that it came from, the time it was sent, the subject, and then basically the headers in the body, and we're just inserting it. 
And now we're going to say every 50th we're going to commit it, so that speeds things up. And every 100th we're going to wait a second. So that's, you know, count is going up, 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 and every 50th you'll see it pause, um, and then it will, uh, every 100th it'll pause for a second. Mostly that's to let me hit control C or to, uh, to not overload any server. Okay, so that's, that's the simple one. The problem is, is this data just gets ugly, and so you'll find yourself wanting to reset this and start it over. This one's going to work, of course, um, but it, it's, these are hard to build. And that's why it's a good idea. Oops. Python 3 gmain.py. How many messages? Well, let's just do one. Okay, so it went and grabbed. Oh, do I have this already running? 51 through 52. Let me start over. Plus minus L star SQLite. Okay, RM content. I must have run it to test it. So let's run it again, python gmain.py, and ask for one message. OK, so there we went and got message one from one to two. We got 226 two characters. And we printed out the email address, the time we got it after all that hacking, and the subject line. And that's what we got. So if we take a look at the database, and we go into the gmain, oh, it, oh, every time you see the content in SQLite journal, that means it it needed to run a commit, and it hasn't run a commit, but I'll hit enter and that will do the commit, and you see that vanish. So now I can open it, and I take a look at... How come there's no messages? Did that one not get stored in there for some reason? Just refresh. Huh, well, let's run it again. Maybe it didn't commit. Maybe I got a bug in it. Let's make a change to the code. <laughs> I'm going to see this connection.commit. See that? Connection.commit. I'm going to commit there. And the other thing I'm going to do is every time I stop to read, I'm going to commit right before I read it. So I think we should, I hope that doesn't blow up. We'll see. So the idea is, is if, if I want to stop, I want it committed. So let's do this. Let's do one message. And now I should hit, is it committed? Now that I should put the commits in, I think that I will, it will look better. And I can't refresh, and so there it is because I committed it, and I don't have, yeah, I don't have the journal file, so that's good. So that's a good idea to put those commits there, so I'll just leave those commits in. When you download it, it'll have those commits in there. Um, so again, I put a commit here and a, a commit at the very, very end um, to make sure, and then I, so that I, I missed that. But now we get one, right? And so let's just run it again, and you'll see how by selecting the max of the ID, it's going to select the max of this and then add one to it so it doesn't, doesn't do the next one. So if I run it again, I say, give me one message, so it goes two to three. And give me two messages. All right? So I hit Enter, and I can do Refresh, and now you see we've got four messages. Okay? And so let's just, uh, let's just fire this baby up until it's get 100. Err, run, 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 run. Right? It just goes and goes, and you'll it pauses once in a while to do a commit. And if I if I made a commit every time, oop, it just oh, paused there. Now it finished. So this will run, and we will get a bunch of data. Uh, the problem is, is if I just run this, it'll take about five hours, okay, to run this and get this all. And I've got a really fast connection, so. I have got a file that you can download. Let's go find it. Let's see if I can, let's see how long it'll take me to download this. I've got a file that you can download and save. Now I'm going to use the command line curl or wget is another command that we Linux and Mac people can use. I don't know, you might have to use uh, your browser to do it. Let's see how long this is going to take. It's retrieving. Minute 30. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just wait when this comes back.
Okay, so now that's done. Uh, I was averaging 10 megabits a second. I downloaded about 600 megabytes, 10 megabits a second. Uh, that will probably be slower for you. Uh, but so now if I take a look, you're going to find that that content.sqlite is 624 megabytes. Now what happens is I've pre-spidered this. And so now if you run gmain.py and ask for, for five more messages, it will pick up where I left that one off. So it's up to message 59,000. And I think that, oh, you saw an error. See, you saw a bug in that one. I don't know what's wrong with that one. So let's see if, uh, so at this point, we're going to have most of the data. It might find its way to the very end. Once you get this, it's it should be not too much more. I don't know. Maybe it's like 63,000 or something. So what we'll do is we will let that run. And uh, we will come back when that's that one's finished and, uh, and run the, the next phase after it's uh, got all of its data. Okay? So thanks for listening.